Well, hello YouTube. Hey, welcome back to another Blades to Be machining video. Pretty fun project we've got for us today. Uh, at least I'm excited about it. This is a customer project and uh, he contacted me a few weeks back, wanted to get this one done. I'm kind of excited to get started on it. So let's get right to what we're doing today. So what we're gonna make is some hybrid hubs. Customer has a 1997 Chevy Silverado. That's what these hubs came off. And he wants to put uh, 2010 Camaro wheels, brakes on that. So we've got a picture here of the uh, what we're gonna do. So the customer supplied the picture. Customer supplied this chunk of heat treated 4140 steel. I ran this in the calculator online and this is six and a half diameter by a foot long. Comes in at about 141 pounds. So pretty good chunk of steel we're gonna start with. And again, we're just making a hybrid hub. So it's gonna be this 97 Chevy Silverado hub on the inside for the bearings, ABS gear. And then it's gonna be 2010 Camaro on the outside. So it's not gonna have the integrated brake disc on here. That goes on after. It's gonna be a little bit different bolt pattern. And uh, this face moves out about an inch or so on here for the wheels to sit out a little bit different. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chunk, cut it into about four and a quarter inch pieces, get those in the lathe, face it, or get it center drilled first. And then we're gonna just start hogging and ripping some metal off of that. So got a few pounds worth of steel there that we're gonna, gonna start with. Even once I cut this into four and a half inch length, to start machining, I think even the four and a half inch piece is gonna start out at about 41 pounds. And when we're done, I think we're gonna end up at less than half of that, 20 pounds worth of chips on each one. Should be a good project, good chance to test out this lathe and, and really start ripping and hogging some metal off of that. With that, let's go ahead and get this unpackaged, get it in the saw, and let's get this cut down to some lengths. We'll get the four jaw chuck on the lathe, get it dialed in, and uh, we'll start getting this thing roughed out and cleaned up. Stay tuned, let's start making some chips. Well, while that's busy cutting, I've uh, verified a few measurements on the drawing, make sure that's looking good. And we need to get these ABS gears pulled off here. So I'm just gonna go throw this in the bandsaw real quick, cut this piece out, put a puller on here and see if that's enough to pull it off. If not, we'll get the torch and we'll put a little bit of heat on there and pull them off that way. Let's go throw this in the bandsaw. We'll cut a quick radius on there and we'll come right back. That looks pretty good. We're just gonna touch that a little bit on the belt grinder. And that should give us enough clearance. And we are moving. All right, we are coming off. And there we go. All right, let's check our saw, see how we're doing here. Oh, so we're just about to make contact. So obviously I'm not gonna be able to go all the way through this piece. So far it's taken about 30 minutes to cut that far. So, hey, we're looking at a long process here as I turn that and continue to cut it. And I'm probably gonna have to hacksaw through the very middle, it looks like. I don't know, we'll see how that comes out, but I don't think I'm making it through to the midway point. So it's gonna be interesting. You know, bit off a little more than I can chew right there. Maybe should have uh, made sure the customer supplied it in, in the right size lengths. I thought a foot piece would be able to make it work, but I'm definitely gonna have a little bit of a challenge getting that cut. Hey, that's all part of the fun, right? One step done in our sea of many on this project. All right, just about to make contact with my bearings there. That was not my smartest move. <laughs> we'll decide if I leave that on the video or not. I guess lining up pretty nice. Clearly this is gonna take a while to cut. All right, we're getting ready for our last turn. And then I should have about a half inch square in the middle that I'm gonna have to cut out by hand with the hacksaw kind of measured. We're going about three inches deep, so if I'm getting three inches on each side, should be good. All right, it likes to get stuck every time I pull it out, so we'll be ready to turn it off. Oh, nice. We came out clean that time. That's good. The last two times it got stuck. All right, we're connecting these two cuts together. Actually lined up not bad. Considering I've turned this piece three times, I'm only off by about half a blade width, so not bad. We'll see how it comes out. All right, well, a little over two hours later, 
pretty warm motor. We are on our last cut. I'm gonna turn it a little bit, see if there's some in between, and then I'll just go at it with a hacksaw to finish this sucker off. I think that's about all we're gonna get with the saw. Well, let's see what this is gonna feel. wasn't as bad as it looked the saw did two hours worth of work i came back it only took me 15 minutes maybe to hacksaw through the the rest of that centerpiece so not bad for this old band saw not bad for this old man i'm breathing a little heavy that's going to work one more to go like that he brought that camaro hub over so that's the camaro hub so again we're making a hybrid of these two Went through, verified some measurements, looked everything over, looking good. Got our second piece, just got that started in the bandsaw, so that's gonna be a couple hours. We'll work through that one again like we did the first one. And now it's time to get this big guy in the four jaw chuck, you know, get that center drilled, get it cleaned up, faced off a little bit, turn it around, lock it back in the chuck again and start hogging off some material. Let's get the chuck on and uh, let's really start making some chips. All right, we got our chuck jaws all turned around. We got the four jaw on here. So I'm gonna get the piece up in here right now. I'm gonna use just a block of wood to hold that in place while we're gonna dial it up. So I don't wanna shove my pointy center right into it because I wanna be able to slide that around in the four jaw chuck, but it's also big and heavy and I don't want it to fall out and crash down on my ways. So I'm going to set it up in here and put this block of wood and then wind my center up on that. So let me make sure I have enough clearance. All right, that should give me enough room to finagle it in there, get it up in place, hold it, wind my center up to hold that piece of metal in there. So that is up and in there. Now, obviously it's hot rolled. It's not like we're gonna get this dialed into precision, but hey, we'll get it close. Twentieth hour or so on the outside of a piece of hot roll. That is gonna work. First step, very slow turn. We're gonna drill a center drill in there. Now again, I'm gonna push it up there close before I even get started. Really can't go anywhere. We're gonna turn it nice and slow. We're gonna turn it at uh, just 100 RPM until we get that center drill in there. We'll get the center up to it, and then we're gonna be ready to go to town and start ripping some chips off there. We go about two thirds of the way up that center drill. Should give us a nice big spot to put our center back in there. There, now we know it is nice and secure and it is not gonna go anywhere. We need a little more room though for tooling. Now we're gonna turn this around. So I do not need to get right into the very center here. Let's see how close I can get with this tool bit. Okay, that'll work nice for facing this off. So again, we're gonna turn it around. We're gonna bore this out. So I do not have to get this faced all the way to the very middle. I just wanna face it enough that when I turn it around, I'm going to get clearance. It's not going to interfere on my flat surface up against those chuck jaws. So that is going to get plenty. If I machine, if I face that off into that diameter, that's going to be plenty for me. We're just going to face that off until it cleans up into there. Still watching my saw over there as we're cutting. And let's pull out that machinist calculator and see what we need to be turning this at for six and a half inches. Alloy steel 4140 carbide 6.5 inches. So we're looking at about 235 RPM for that outside. I can maybe speed the cut up a little bit as we're moving in. We're going to run it at 
250 since we're not spending very much time at this uh, at this diameter out here. Honestly, pretty impressed at how that saw did on uh, multiple cuts around this piece. So it hit almost half of it, nicked on this spot up here with a 30 thou cut. So it's uh, it's pretty close in there. We're gonna up the feet a little bit for these roughing cuts. So right now we're still only going at four thou per inch. Let's get that up to seven LCS. So let's double that feed a little bit. So that's the nice thing about the VFD is on this outer diameter, I slowed it down right at the beginning of that last cut. You may have heard it even at fast speed. And then as I get closer to the middle, I can speed it up and increase that speed a little bit and keep the finish a little bit more consistent all the way in. Pretty happy with how that's looking right now. Just about cleaned up. We'll take another uh, small cut off of there right now, get that cleaned up. And then we're gonna take a cut off the outside just back far enough that we can turn it around, stick it back in there and have a nice square surface to grab that and repeat. And then we'll start really getting rid of chips on the other side. Got that faced off, looking nice. Let's get our other tool bit on there. You notice I keep a set of pliers handy. That one spot there where the chips get sucked in behind your tool bit, that'll go in there and ruin your finish. So you wanna make sure you're always ready. Keep that pulled out of there so that does not happen. Okay, we wanna slow this back down to about 235 again. We're taking a full cut off of the outside. Feed going the right way. And first we're gonna get this saw going again so that it can be cutting while we're working. All right, my goal with this first cut is to get in there far enough that I get underneath all of this scale. Pretty hard on tool bits, so I'm gonna to try to get underneath it. I know when I dialed it in, I was within about 35 thou or so. So if I take a 50 thou cut off of here, I should get underneath that scale and get a pretty clean cut going across. Yeah, for an outer diameter, we're going to 6.175. We're actually at six and a half. We're a little oversized on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a full 100 thou cut off here. Seven thou per revolution feed. So just taking a nice roughing cut. Let's get rid of some of this material. Clearly cutting just fine. I got a new setup in here. This is a new tool bit running a four jaw chuck that I haven't run. I need to go in here and make sure I have enough clearance all the way up to the chuck to make sure nothing's gonna hit. So I need to do that before I go in here. I should have clearance all the way to the chuck. Yep, I do. I've got clearance all the way to those jaws. We can make it over top. But again, something you want to check, especially when you've got new tooling on there and you're trying something different. We're going to go ahead and cut that in pretty far. Just wanted to check that before I let it get in there. Okay, we got underneath there. We got all that scale off. I'm gonna take one more 100 thou cut just to get my line out of there from what I just made. We'll get another 100 thou off of that. And then we're gonna turn this around and set it back up in here the other way. And there we go. A couple nice rough cuts off there. That is looking just like what we want it to look like. Gonna break that edge so not cutting ourselves as we're picking this up and moving it around. All right, all that material is coming off later, but for right now, just get rid of that sharp edge. Save our fingers and other bits. So I'm still mentally thinking through this project of how I want to cut it. So on this side, we've got a lot of material that needs to come off, but I want to turn that outside diameter. Let me just go check one thing. Yeah. So basically there's just over three quarters of an inch of material needs to get all faced off of this at some point. So that means that on the outside diameter, the outside diameter is going to exist about, yeah, the true outside diameter of this is going to be about right here, right here. All of this material needs to come down off of here and only this much on this side. So I could turn that outside diameter right now, get rid of all of this material, turn it around, put it in there and hold it that way. Or I can turn it around right now, get rid of all that material. And then when I turn it back, get rid of all this material, or maybe just do that and take a finish cut off. Okay, answer my question. Sometimes you just gotta think about things for a minute. If I turn this around right now, I am nice flat surface up against my jaws and I am grabbing that full width of that piece. If I step 
step this back, if I rough it back right now, it will fit inside the diameter of the next step on my jaws, but these jaws are not 775 deep, so it's gonna hit the next step back on my jaws, and I'm only gonna be grabbing onto a little over half of the jaw width, so I'm gonna lose almost half of my clamping surface if I did that, because it's not gonna go back far enough for that diameter that's in there. So I would run into the next jaw step, so I'm gonna stick with my original plan. I'm gonna turn this around right now and we're gonna rough off all of the other side. When we turn the other side around, we're gonna be able to turn the jaws back, be able to have good clamping surface, and then we'll be able to finish machining this. I also I have a large um, bull nose center so after we've bored through it, I'll be able to still put a bull nose center in there while I'm roughing all this material off, even after I've bored through from the other side. So that's the plan. We're gonna stick with turning it around right now, clamping it in there, and then start hogging off some material. And again, we've got that block of wood in there. Make sure this can really move around nice and easy. Just for grins, we'll kind of see how square we are here. Yeah, we should be pretty good since we're up against our flat surface in there. So we've got about maybe three tenths run out at that end. Yeah, maybe three or four tenths run out there. Well, yeah, try and tweak that a little bit. We've got a couple tenths run out, maybe. So we are looking good. Now we're gonna get our center drill in this one. Again, we're gonna bore this out so I don't need to face all the way into the middle that's enough I can rough all of this off now and then when it comes time to face it we're basically we're just gonna drill it out and we'll bore it so we're gonna get our width and everything we're gonna get all of that done as we rough this out get our outside machine um, you know we'll rough all this off first and then we'll go through and take some finish cuts after but now it is time to get rid of a lot of material so looking at the rougher sketch here so we're on this back side right here so we have got to get rid of all of this metal right now. Probably gonna make about 15 pounds of chips right now just roughing this out. Almost a quarter of an inch to come off of there still. I was a little scared of how my saw was gonna cut for square, so I went a little wide. So we've got about a quarter of an inch to come off of that. So let's go ahead and hog some uh, bigger 100 thou cuts off of there and see how it does with that. First, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this scaly outside so that we're not just smacking into that every time. Of course, I guess I didn't say anything about that. My machinist band-aid really wasn't much of a little cut from the chips, but you know, it just kept leaking. Can't be bleeding on my customer's material. So quick band-aid, it'll stop bleeding in a minute. It's just a little nothing. Sometimes these hot, sharp chips will get you. So that's about 60 thou or so from the, the width that we're looking for. So about 65, 70. So let's take a 50 thou cut off of that. And then we'll just have a quick finish cut to take off of that at some point later. All right, so for our roughing, we're gonna go back, well, to finish it, we're gonna go back 2.692. So we're gonna go back 2.6 right now. I still got a little cut off of there. So it gives me 100 thou to finish up there. So we're gonna go back 2.6 to rough it out. We didn't take too much off of that diameter, so I'm still at 6.5 where that one cleaned up. So from 6.5 minus 3.850 is 2.65 inches. So 2.65 inches is what we're going for. So I'm zeroed out right there. One, two. So if I just go 2.6, make a mark. 
Again, I'll keep an eye on that too, but that gives me something to look at while I'm roughing. I've got a mark here for roughing. I've got a mark here. Start getting rid of some material. And also what that does is when I get close, I don't want to get as close here because I want to leave room to put a radius on that back edge in there for strength. I want to put a nice big radius back in there. So as I get close to that, even with my rough cuts, I'm going to leave little steps on there that I can go and machine out into a radius. Time to just let the machine work for a little bit here now. So that one started out as a 200 thou cut because we still had that little lip on there. Went down and just took another, uh, you know, it was only 100 for the rest, but it was cutting at 200. So let's try roughing a little bit here at 200 thou cut. See how it does. Well, the machine liked it just fine. I caught my beard on fire in there somewhere. Those chips are coming off of there hot. There's no doubt about that. Let's keep her going. All right, I think I'm about running that SD card on here, but blade taking 200 thou cuts, no problem. But with the door open for the saw, flinging chips all the way out in the driveway, so that's not gonna work out. So we'll just rip off some more 100 thou cuts. We'll keep roughing this out a little bit, and uh, we'll keep making some chips until I run out of SD card and try and get that saw cut done out there. another one down i think this cut came out even better than the last one but here's the actual piece there we go we are cut ah, well it took about five hours of that saw running today be a little bit of hacks on we got two good done there's where we left off with that other one in the lathe and we'll come back and start roughing all that out tomorrow okay well now that we got the door closed definitely gets a little brighter in here so really get a sense of what this thing is looking like today so that's a little better shot of it now that the lights are on did some quick cleanup tomorrow is trash day so i already have what feels like a, a pile of chips in there definitely some weight in the dustpan as i pulled them out so we did good today felt good to get some work done and be productive we're back and we are ready to get started continue roughing out this piece of material just wanted to show you what i did real quick customer did a great job supplied very detailed drawings it's three pages a lot of information what i tried to do is i wanted to get this down onto one page with the critical dimensions that I need in order to be able to rough this out and machine it. I went through, you know, it may look a little bit messy, but it works for me. I know what's on there. So I went through, cleaned it up, put on these, uh, the key dimensions that I need. I circled my two critical bearing surfaces, also where that gear has to press on the outside, circled that. So I know I've got some critical dimensions. A lot of these other dimensions on here, you know, really plus or minus five, 10 thou is all we need to hit on, on some of these. So so not as critical uh, to get that little cap on there. That needs to be pretty close. But these other dimensions, this is just where you can come in from the backside to be able to knock your bearing out. Truly, that's just, you know, within five or 10 on that diameter, that one, this taper, we're just going to try to keep some strength in between. So we're going to just cut a taper to connect those dots. I wanted to know what is my minimum diameter. So when I rough bore this out, I can rough bore through the entire thing out to 1.580. And then after that, I can start working at one side and the other side. Gave us a good rough drawing to work from. Hey, let's get some more metal off here and make some chips.
We can only trust the DRO so much. So time to get in there. Let's take some measurements. Let's see how we're doing on this. Rough in our outer diameter, rough in that depth. I took a quick uh, face cut on there just to knock all my bumps off, all my steps off from cutting in there. As I had that cut going, I zeroed my DRO so I know where I am on depth there. And I went about two thou past. So I zeroed my DRO so I know where I am on that, uh, on that depth there now as well. Quickly did that. Let's take a few measurements and let's see how we're doing on the rough cuts. We'll probably go ahead and rough this outer diameter now as well. Get that within about 25. So my goal is get all these outside diameters within about 25 thou. And then we will uh, pour this and get the inside roughed out as well. And then after it's all roughed out, then we'll go ahead and we'll start finishing the outside and finishing the inside. But that way, if something does happen, if for some reason something catches, it moves, it does anything in there, we still have that chance to dial it back in and finish everything concentric inside and out. So that's my goal in roughing everything to start with instead of finishing steps as they go along. But actually, we're not doing too bad on temperature there. Staying pretty decent. All right, so the goal on this outer diameter, kind of take a look at our picture here. Oh, let's see, we want to hit 3.9 roughly on this outer diameter, and then I'm going to go down to 3.7. So what I'm taking into consideration is the, the lug studs need to go through the back. I need to make sure that where I put where I put my bevel on there, that I still have clearance that those lug studs are still going to go on there and sit flat. So we're going to go 3.9, really just hit that pretty rough within plus or minus 10, and then going to go down to 3.7, and I'm going to leave leave a step out 200 so that I can go in there and uh, put the bevel kind of a radius in there between 3.7 and 3.9. Make sure that corner has some good strength. So let's see how we're doing. I'm still a little over four inches, good one for 3.9. Let's see what we're looking at. I started taking 150 thou rough cuts. That seemed to work pretty well. So I'm at four and 90 thou right now. So four and 90 going to 3.9. So we've got 190 thou left to go off of that. I had my line. I can still take another 150 thou cut off of there just fine, but hey, I wanted to stop and check first. So if I take another 150 off of there, that should put me within 40 thou of what I'm looking for. So I think I will do that. I'm gonna hit, uh, we'll take another 150 off of that. And then we're gonna come back and take a cut off of this outer diameter. Diameter. So let's take one more 150, then we'll come measure that and we'll rough that down to our finished outside diameter. We'll take our other rough cut off of this one and then we're going to come rough out this step on here for where that, that gear goes back on. And once we have that done, everything on the outside should be rough and then we'll go in there and get this drilled and bored out. All right, so that puts us at 3.9, 3.943. 3 so on this outside diameter, okay, we're currently at 6.4. We're going for 6.175. Get out our trusty calculator. So we got 225 thou to go off of there. So let's get 150 thou cut off of this outside. I'm gonna go in here and mark. Need to get pretty close to those jaws. I wanna make sure I know exactly where that is, where I'm not gonna hit anything. And that's where I'm going to zero out my DRO so that when it's moving, I know where I can go to. Slow this back down a little bit now that we're back to our big diameter. And we'll knock out her. Gets us down to 6.250. We are going for 6.175. All right, should leave us about 25 to take off of there. Okay, so I still have 20 thou I need to take off the face of this. We're going for a depth of 2.677 plus 20 thou, so really 2.697 is what I need to get in there for depth. And I'm at about six, so we've got almost 100 thou to go off of that. So let's go ahead and, and knock some of that off of there right now as well. Just a rough hand feed cut to get some of that material off of there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get that down to my 2.9. It's not really a diameter, it's just the top edge of the bevel. So we're gonna rough that right down to 2.9. Take about 49 thou off of that, and then we'll just do a quick skim to come back off of that face as well, just to clean that up and have that nice and rough.
Okay, just tickled a couple thou off of there to clean up my rough hand feed. So now we're gonna go down to 200 thou off of that. So we'll take 200 thou cuts, but I'm gonna stop 200 thou short. So that's gonna be my, uh, leave my material that I need in there to cut my radius bevel in there. So we're gonna get this down 200 thou, stop a little bit short, and then we'll rough out our notch here. So we're 3.7 and got 10 thou left for a little finish cut off of that, or we'll just see how we're looking. Again, not really a critical diameter out of there either. We just need to hit a nice radius. Our critical diameter is where that gear presses on the end of this right here. And that's what we're gonna be going for. Let's rough that notch out of there right now. So that needs to be back 470, and we're going for a diameter of 3.148 to 3.149. So we've got 560 thou to come off of there, and we need to go back 470. Still have a hundred and sixty to go just to rough it out even. Three ten, three point three ten, minus three point one fifty. Just keep it there. Yep, right at a hundred and sixty to go still. Let's take another hundred. One seventy five, one seventy four. So we've got about twenty four thou to come off of there for our finish cut. So we've got that roughed out. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to rough that radius out right now before we get this drilled and bored. All right, just whipped up a quick radius tool here. My tool holders were all full, so I needed to stick this on something else so it wasn't centered up. So I need to drop it down a little bit here, real quick, to center it. Now, if you've watched my other video, this is one of those times where it's nice to be able to quickly turn my tool post and get that where I need to. And I use a 45, we'll be able to put that back where it was very close here in a second. So let's go ahead and get this radius roughed out. And again, we may have to go back and tweak this a little bit after as well, but this will get us pretty much set up right now. And we've got a radius roughed on there. All right, let's get this line back up. And we should be ready to get this drilled and bored. Pretty secure with how that's held in there, how that's held on. But you know what? We have steady rest for a reason. I'm gonna be drilling and I'm gonna be hogging a lot of material out of this. So what the heck, I think I've got enough room I can get my steady rest to fit. I don't think I'm really gonna run it on there tight, but I will just have it on there as a safety measure. Something happens, you know, that gets hit with a boring bar or something else and that piece doesn't get knocked and come flying out of there. So for safety, we'll go ahead and put that steady rest on there. I'm not gonna have these running. I'm gonna have them backed off just a little bit. But it's there, something happens, that thing can barely move and it's not gonna come flying out of there. Still have a pretty good hunk of weight going on with that piece. All right, well, I ordered a one inch drill bit. It'll get here in time to do the second one of these. So I've got two choices. I can either wait till tomorrow to get any more work done, or we're gonna go with my biggest current drill bit, which is a half inch, and we will just start boring from there. Hey, that's what we're gonna go with. So uh, like I say, the next one should go a little better with a one inch drill bit. Maybe I'll swap it out and put that drilling on the video instead of the first one. But for right now, let's drill this out. Been running pretty slow, but let's just check the calculator, see how fast I wanna go for drilling a half inch hole four inch inches deep. So drill calculator, alloy 4140.5 drill, high speed, max RPM is 1800. Hole depth is four inches. So it says I can go up to 688 RPM. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and run it at 380. I think that'll be fine for us. I don't have coolant running on this.
and we broke through. Greatness. All right, let's get that nub off of there. We don't need that in our way. Now, of course, our other issue with drilling such a small hole is now we've only gonna be able to use that teeny tiny boring bar to go a full four inches. So I fully expect we're gonna have some chatter problems and some other things to overcome, but we'll see how it goes. If it's too bad, we'll have to wait for the other drill bit to come tomorrow. So let's see how well I can clamp when I have full. We should be down to about four and a quarter inches now. So when I have a full four and a quarter inches sticking out, I can actually slide that up a little bit and get that closer to the tip as well. Okay, so we'll go with about right there. Only gonna have, so we're gonna have two of the four bolts holding that on there. And for the first cut, it's gonna just be some slow going hand feed because I've got to get kind of a lot of material off of there. So let's just see how we make it. In order to have the bar and everything clear, I've got to take a pretty decent amount out of there. Let's see if we can't get some of that junk out of the hole here first. So I'm just gonna kind of go by hand and feed this through and try to get this big cut. We'll see what it does. If it shatters too bad, I can always go halfway through. So on our piece, 1.580 is what it's bored all the way through. So that's what we're roughing out to right now is 1.580, rough that all the way in. Then we can rough our two steps up here and then we can cut that taper to sort of connect that up in there and maximize saving some material. So for right now, roughing it to 1.580. Again, if it's chattery too bad, I can shorten up that bar by a whole inch and a quarter and just go into that spot. And then we can always go do the rest from the other side. But I'd love to get it roughed out to 1.580 1 uh, all the way from this side before we turn it around. So let's see how this is going to do. Let me slow it down a little bit and I'll zero. So that's where we're starting at half inch. I know I need to take an inch off of the diameter from there. And we'll get a sense of where we are on depth here. And actually there was one other thing I was going to do to maximize our ability to get in there is I'm going to pull that up right there and now I need to line that back up again. Bar is definitely not very happy sticking out there that far. Well, let's go with shortening that up by one and a quarter. All right, let's shorten this up to three inches and see what we can accomplish there. Three inches, that gets us back into all of our bolts. Well, we're slowly whittling away at it here. All right, so we're up to about 8.50. We're punched in there a little bit. Well, if we had a one inch drill bit, that would be our starting point. Even just a little bigger than that. That would sure be nice right now. So now that we got that punched out, let's see if we can't make it in there a little further. Well, that's a lot of work to get to where that drill is going to get to for the next. But we are in there a good long ways. So we're in there about 3.2 inches. We are yeah, pretty much right at one inch diameter. So again, that's what I'm going to be able to knock out with a drill bit on the other one. But it was worth it to get some machining done today. So if we're in there 3.2 inches, a little less than an inch, 880 thou left to break all the way through. So that puts us somewhere about halfway in between this surface right here. And we're back in here with only 880 left. So we've got lots of room out to that first diameter that we're going to hit. So that's nice. We'll be able to cut that taper in there to 1.580 and be good to go. Let's switch out this bar and see if we can't uh, make a little better time on this boring project. There we go. All right. Well, as you can tell, hadn't used this boring bar before. Brand new. And you know, when it locks up in there tight, those catch a little bit. So, hey, just need to unseat those to get that to be able to move a little easier. So I'm going in there 3.2 inches, but I've got a little bit of base on the front here. So let's just go with leaving that out. Three and a half, minimize any chatter that we're gonna get. Give me the length that we're gonna need. All right, let me go back and just double check where I am to bottom out here. 
Tell you what, this DRO is nice. Didn't have one of these on a lathe when I ran one 25 years ago and I'm already kind of hooked, especially when you're in these blind holes. Something like this, not having to count revolutions and you know exactly where you are. Pretty nice. All right, so that's what I'm operating on for depth. We're currently at one inch. We need to go to 1.580, so let's just get 500 thou out of there in a hurry. Now, I feel like we can speed this back up again a little bit. Let's get up to, I tell you what, we're going for one and a half. Let's just do a quick, what's our max speed? We can do one and a half here. So back to turning, alloy 4140, we're bend carbide. 1.5. All right, so now on this 1.5 inch diameter, we can get up to 1,000 RPM. I think we're gonna just go with about 620. Let's see how that feels for us. Back to 4,000 per inch, so let's see how this bar likes that. All right, it cut nice. We're not having chatter problems. Uh, the chips aren't really clearing a lot. There's not a ton of room around the bar, so I'm gonna stick with 50,000 cuts right now. Not gonna jump up to 100 thou cuts, even though it looks like maybe it can handle it, but I just wanna make sure we've got good chip clearance and get everything out of there. All right, we should be getting pretty close to one and a half inches now. Three under one and a half. So we're going for 580. Um, I ended up taking 50 thou cuts all the way to rough that out. Tried 100 thou and it was just too much chatter with the bar all the way out there. So we're gonna be able to shorten that bar up when we rough it out and, and take our more important cuts here on the end. So for right now, I'm gonna take another 50 thou cut out of there and we'll just double check it, but I'm gonna finish it from the other side. So I'm gonna leave that last 30 and then we will finish out our bore on the, from the other direction. We'll cut our taper from this side and it should make a nice little matchup over there. So let's take another 50 out of this, and then we should be ready to bring our bar back in and start roughing out the front edge. All right, well, we got rid of our chatter. Worked pretty well. Let's see, we're actually at 542. We've got to go all the way to 580. I'm gonna take another 20 thou out of there. Just see what a lighter cut does from a chatter perspective. They didn't put a no for later, so let's take another 20 thou. Okay, 563. I like it. That gets us just enough. We can finish it off from the other side. Very happy with that finish. So again, good kind of test how we're doing for finishing. We've got a couple bearing surfaces we're gonna to need to knock out here in a bit. Test how everything is, is working. All right, let's pull that bar in a little bit and now we're gonna rough our two steps here on the front. Gonna go in a total of 1.3 inches to that second step. So we're gonna go in 1.3 inches and we're gonna to go to a diameter of 2.285. Again, that is just clearance to be able to pound on the backside to knock your bearings out. So not a very precise size measurement that we need to hit, but we do want to get, you know, somewhere right around that 1.3 inch. So that's our next board out to that. And then we'll come out and we'll rough out our bearing surface on the front. All right, I still have 20 thou to take off this as a cleanup cut. So we're gonna go in 1.320. I do not wanna go back in and clean up that, uh, that back edge when we're done. So we're gonna go in a full 1.320 and then it should be 1.3 when we're done. Okay, I'm currently at 1.562. I need to go to 2.285 minus 1.562. So we're taking 723 thou. Get our 700 out of there and see how that looked. And again, I'm going into 1.5. 320 deep. I've been used to going to zero, so let's keep it the same. If we go to 19, we'll take a little cleanup pass when we're all done here. So.
All right, let's see where we are here. Be somewhere around 2.2. Yeah, going for 2.285. I should be somewhere around 2.260. All right, 2.261. I take 20 thou out of there. One, that will be fine. All right, let's take a 20 thou finish cut. It's probably gonna take a hair extra. We've got a little bit of heat in that. Again, this is not a critical dimension. Just need to come in from the backside to be able to knock your bearing out. So we'll take a 20 thou finish cut. We'll do a quick face up uh, that edge back in there, and then we'll rough a front, and then we're gonna cut that taper and just sort of clean up a little bit of that material inside there before we get ready to finish this thing out. And it's looking beautiful in there. All right, so we should have come out somewhere around 281, probably closer to 283 since we took a, a lighter cut. Okay, 282. We will call that beautiful. Now I'm trying to think if I want to rough that taper and get that done before I even rough out this bearing surface on the front. And I think I do. I think I just want to get that taper knocked out in there. And then we'll come back and rough and finish our bearing surface all at the same time. I just want to put this taper, again, pretty arbitrary sizes in here. So we're going to taper it up. To make it end a little, I'm going to make it a little steeper. So I'm going to go for 11 and a half degrees. And so that I don't, you know, I'm not going to have an additional radius down in there. I'm just going to have it end right at that diameter. There's actually a little bit of a flat across there. So if I end up with some flat, that's great. And then when we go in from the other side, we'll just make sure that hey, we end up with a 580 all the way through so that it fits over the shaft. And if we end up with a little more or less of a step there, it's going to be fine. There's our bearing surface. This notch right here is again so that you can get in from behind and knock your bearing out with a punch. So the rest of this is just pretty arbitrary sizes. That should be good. Pretty close to hitting my back edge there. All right, let's see how this does. All right, I'm going for roughly 2.1 inches at the front of this taper. Let's get kind of a sense of where we are right now. Two point nine seventeen, you know, roughly one hundred and eighty thou to go, and that looks about right. Well, we got just a smidge of chatter on that last finish cut. Still not bad. That's gonna be fine back inside of there. Nice little step up. All right, let's move our bar back and uh, let's rough out this bearing surface. Let's get that going. Okay, we're going in 953, so 973. And let's get the calculator, see what we're doing. Just double check where we left off on this one. Okay, 1.282, 2.560 minus 2.282 equals 278,000. Okay, 278,000 is what we're gonna do. So let's rough a couple hundred out of there. Point four seventy three. We're going for two point five sixty. All right, so that's eighty seven thou. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap for the evening. So we'll give this a chance to fully cool down. We get this steady rest off of here. We'll save that for our next piece. Well, for a safety net, we didn't have to use it, didn't need it, but hey, nice to have it there. That's what safety nets are for. We'll 
put that over here for the next one. And here's a look at our progress for the day. So there's what we've been working on inside that hole all day long. You can see where we made it to with that little bar. Made it back in there, roughed it out. We've got our taper. We've got a couple of steps. So tomorrow we need to come out here and finish this whole thing. So we've got really one, two surfaces to finish up on the outside. We may just touch that. We're gonna take this face back 20 thou to finish up our depth. Face this off 20 thou. So again, a little bit of work. We'll go in, we'll start with facing, facing, and then we'll turn this outside, we'll turn this outside, and then we'll go in there and we'll turn that bearing surface on the inside. And then we're done, we've got one rough. We'll pull this out. Again, we always talk about minimizing the number of setups. So before we turn these jaws back around to grab this and finish it, we're gonna rough out the other one and get the other one to this same point and then we'll turn the jaws around we'll turn them around and we'll grab it here we'll finish the other end on both of them at the same time so not bad progress for the day yeah we made a pretty good pile of chips this was cleaned out this morning since yesterday was trash day so we'll do a little bit of cleanup get some of this thrown out and we'll see you back in the shop tomorrow piece is nice and cool down we are ready to take some finish cuts off of this so we've got right at 25 thou to take off of that we're going to take 10 thou off of each face leave 10 to take off the other side so i double checked our width here so we're going to take 10 it's actually only about five off there 10 off here 25 off this outer diameter right at 25 to take off of that diameter I'm gonna go back to my roughing feed for all these rough finishes, and we'll use a finishing feed for that one diameter there. All right, actually, just to clean this up, blend in that radius, I'm gonna take just a quick skim off of this one as well. I've got eight thou left. This new insert, get nice even finish across everything. So we're finished here, finished here. Got a nice blend in on that radius. Finished on this face. Let's see how we did on taking our eight thou off there. Spot on. Right at 700, that's good. So let's hit this OD and touch off and finish that little bit off of that face. And then we'll get that board done. All right, we are at 173. All right, so we are right at 24 thou. So let's take 12. And then we'll come back and take another 12th thou cut. We're going to slow this one down, get a little nicer feet. This is where our gear press is on. And that's leaving us with about 11 and a half to take. All right, so we've got a tolerance of 3.148 to 3.149 here. And we are about two tenths under 349. So yeah, about 348 and a half. 348 and a half. Okay, so that should be everything on the outside. Uh, what am I gonna use to break all these corners here? We'll come back and do that after. We'll bevel everything after. Let's get that bore done. All right, so we're going for 2.560 to up to 2.561. And where did we leave off? Okay, 2.525. I thought we left it a little closer than that, but I guess not. So we still have 35,000 to come out of there. All right, I think I wanted to make sure I left enough for a couple of finish cuts. Right at 525. Okay. Make sure, 0 0.560 minus 0.525. Yes, 35 thou to go. So I'm gonna take a 10 thou cut. See how I like the finish, everything, get me set. And then I'll take a 12 and then we'll take another 12. See how much flex we're getting out of the bar and just really make sure we know what's taking place on there since this is a bearing surface. And one of the two most important dimensions we've got to hit on this whole piece. Also see where I am for depth. 
we are going for 953. All right, well, we're good on depth and a two and a half diameter. Let's see what we want to turn this. All right, up to 600 RPM. Okay, so that touched off a little deep. That first 10 took 11 and a half out of there. So we're at 537 on our way to 560. So 23 thou left. I like our finish at that speed and feed, so. Okay, we've got almost 12 to go, like 11 and a half. All right, the 560 is the minimum end of my tolerance. So I'm gonna take a full 12 out of there. Moment of truth here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, 9.59 and oh, right at 9.59. We're gonna need to take a skim out of there. We got a little extra flex on that last cut. Sure we didn't have a chip or something under there. Yeah, that's under and that's our tight end of the tolerance. So yeah, we're gonna need to take a little skim out of that. Don't wanna leave it that tight. So we were right at 12 on that cut with the flex on there. Let's see where that gives us again. Well, it took just a little sheen away from our finish, but still feels very good. Okay, I feel better about that. We hit about 560 and just under 561. So that's still two and a half tight on our bearing, which is good. I can deal with that. That is well within our tolerance. Well, very nice. Let's break some edges in here and then we will get this thing out of here and turn it around. And I think we'll just do the same thing to break them on the outside. Well, there we have it. One half of one is done. Finish looks good. All the edges are broken. That is going to work nice, I believe. So now we're gonna get the other one in here, rough the other one down, get the other one finished to this same spot. We'll turn our jaws around, we'll turn them both around and we'll finish our other end. So, there we go. We're a quarter of the way through. Lots of chips to make still. Stay tuned.